Next, we'll say a few things about rounding. Rounding involves using approximate numbers to get approximate answers. And you can simplify a problem by using approximate numbers instead of exact numbers. Now, most of the time in math, we use exact numbers, and we expect exact answers. Like 2 plus 2 equals 4, for example. If you add 2 and 2, your answer is exactly 4. It's not approximately 4 or some number close to 4. It is exactly 4. In some cases, however, it makes more sense to use approximate numbers rather than exact numbers. Here's an example. Suppose you're driving from Atlanta to Jacksonville, Florida. That distance is about 300 miles. Not exactly, but about 300 miles. And that's something you might want to know if you're going to drive from Atlanta to Jacksonville. You might want to figure out how long it's going to take or how much gas you're going to need, how much the trip will cost. So you'll need to know that distance from Atlanta to Jacksonville. The point I'm making here, though, is that the distance is inexact. It's a little bit ambiguous. The question also could come up, well, from what part of Atlanta to what part of Jacksonville? Atlanta is a big town. You know, the city limits of Atlanta spread out pretty far. And the same thing with Jacksonville. So the distance from Atlanta to Jacksonville is it the distance from the center of town in one city to the center of town in the other? Or is it the distance from the edge of Jacksonville to the edge of Atlanta? Well, chances are the distance you're concerned with is from wherever you are starting from in Atlanta to wherever you're ending in Jacksonville. Someone else driving from Atlanta to Jacksonville might not be starting from the exact same place and might not be ending from the exact same place. So my point here is that if we talk about the distance from Atlanta to Jacksonville, it doesn't really make sense to give exact answers. If someone asks you how far it is from Atlanta to Jacksonville and you say it's 310.4 miles, they're probably not going to expect to cover exactly 310.4 miles in their drive from Atlanta to Jacksonville. It makes more sense in a case like this to use approximate numbers. So to the nearest 100 miles, it's 300 miles is the distance. To the nearest 10 miles, it's about 310 from Atlanta to Jacksonville. And what we mean here, when we say it's 300 miles from Atlanta to Jacksonville, we mean it's more than 200 and less than 400. In fact, we really mean it's more than 250 and less than 350. If you think of 250 as a number that's less than 300, and 350 as a number that's larger, if the distance from Atlanta to Jacksonville were less than 250, then we would have rounded it down to 200 when giving a number to the nearest 100 miles. If it were more than 350, we would have rounded up to the nearest 100, making it 400 miles if we were giving a number to the nearest 100 miles. 310 miles. If we're thinking of the distance to the nearest 10 miles, then we mean it's not 300, it's not 320. What we mean is it's really between 305 and 315. If it were less than 305 miles, we would have rounded down to 300 to give a number to the nearest 10 miles. And if it were more than 315, we would have rounded up to 320. And in a, in a case such as this, it doesn't really make sense to give the distance to the nearest mile. Because Atlanta, just Atlanta, just the perimeter highway around Atlanta, um, from one side to the other is about 20 miles. And Jacksonville sprawls out a, about as large or maybe even larger than Atlanta. Very, they're both very large, spread out cities. They're not concentrated uh, geographically in one small area. They both sprawl significantly. So it doesn't really even make sense to give a distance to the nearest mile. To the nearest 10 miles is probably about as accurate as you would, wanna, um, as you would want to state this distance. So my point here is that sometimes it makes sense to use approximate numbers. And to do that, you need to know how to round. Rounding is the process of approximating a number by using a simpler number that's close to the original number. And you can picture this on a number line. Here's a number line marked off in increments of 10. 
and I have the number 84 marked. You can see 84 is between 80 and 90. But you can also see that 84 is closer to 80 than it is to 90. So if we wanted to round 84 to the nearest 10, we would say it's 80. 84 is equal to approximately, and this little symbol here means approximately equal to, it's kind of like an equal sign, but the lines are squiggly. 84 is approximately equal to 80. That would be correct rounding. We wouldn't say it's approximately equal to 90, because rounding to the nearest 10, it's closer to 80 than it is to 90. Here's another example. We see, we see a number line here uh, calibrated in increments of 100, 500, 600, 700, 800. And the number 527 is marked here. It sits there between 500 and 600. And you can see, and even without a number line, you can probably tell just mentally that 527 is closer to 500 than it is to 600. So if we were to round 527 to the nearest 100, we would say 527 is approximately equal to 500. That would be a better statement than saying it's approximately 600 because it's closer to 500 than it is to 600. And one more example, this number line is marked off in increments of 1,000. You see the numbers there, 51,000, 52,000, and so on. And the number 52,775 is marked. It sits at a particular place on the number line. If we were to take this number and round it to the nearest thousand, we can see that it's closer to 53,000 than it is to 52,000. So rounding the number 52,775, we could say it's approximately equal to 53,000. And the number 53,000 is a simpler number to work with than 52,775. If we need to do some math, we need to multiply or divide or something like that, it's going to be a little bit easier with that number. So in cases where rounding is appropriate, it would make sense and could result in simplifying the problem, rounding to the nearest thousand.